Well, hello there. Welcome to Moderate Divide, where we take a moderate, non-emotional look at two sides of a topic. Today's topic, the football kneeling in protest. Let's kick off this conversation, gentlemen. Hey, it's Zach. Kneeling is respectful. You kneel for a fallen soldier. You kneel to pray. You kneel before royalty. This, this kneeling is peaceful. It's non-violent. The, the problem is, every time a black person tries to protest, someone finds something wrong with how they did it. This isn't about kneeling. This is about trying to silence a voice of minorities and say, we don't care what you have to say. Run here. Zach just mentioned God, soldiers, royalty, and then talked about people playing catch for our amusement. These are not the same things. Like, football is about touchdowns and cheerleaders. It's not about politics. And I certainly don't want to see some overly privileged, extremely rich guy insulting our police and attacking our soldiers and then claim that he's the victim. So when you see the players take a knee, what do you think? I, I see a respectful, peaceful protest. They're, they're trying to bring awareness to police brutality and discrimination toward minorities. These football players are using their fame to bring attention to an issue that they think is important. It's, it's not peaceful. This is, they're angry with the police. They're angry at our country. They're, they're not respecting the soldiers which gave them the right to play football in the first place. This is, this is not about peace. This is about angry men displaying their disrespect. But the protest itself is peaceful. They are kneeling there quietly. But I mean, if you see someone getting attacked, it should make you angry. Injustice does make me angry, but let's flip this scenario. I'm seeing a bunch of men disrespect our police and our soldiers, and so yes, that makes me angry. It's not an attack on the troops. So when Kaepernick first started this protest, he did remain seated, and a veteran came up to him and said, that looks disrespectful. So they kind of decided that he would kneel instead so that he could still do his protest, but it wouldn't be perceived as disrespect. Well, maybe that one vet was satisfied, but a lot of people aren't. A lot of people still see kneeling during the anthem as disrespect to our soldiers. Yeah, everyone's gonna have their own opinion, but you're proving my point here, because rather than talk about the actual protest, we're talking about the flag and, and patriotism, and rather than actually listening to what they're saying, we're trying to make them out to be the villains in their own protest. But I am listening to them, and just because you use the pitch, racism's bad, I mean, obviously it is, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna join every protest that says that. I mean, the protest says, let's stop discriminating minorities, and what part of that don't you agree with? I don't like the part where it's not genuine. Kaepernick wasn't protesting when he was at the top of his game. He waited until they benched him. And the problem is, he's not peaceful. He wears socks with, with pigs dressed up as officers. He advocates for someone who murdered a police officer. Okay, but that's not an issue with the protest itself, you just don't like Kaepernick. No, but this is the guy that started the whole thing, and if you look at the Nike deal, it just proves that he's not being genuine. He, he teams up with Nike, even though his whole pitch is stopping people from being oppressed. Nike has these sweatshops where they oppress all their workers. It's not about helping people, it's just about his own fame and fortune. No, he absolutely wants to help. I mean, that's why he just donated a million dollars to different charities that work with oppressed communities. And a lesson about racial inequality from a rich, famous black man. I mean, it sounds like this oppression hit him really hard. Just because someone overcame oppression doesn't mean it didn't affect him. I mean, racism is still very alive today. Yeah, racism is bad, but racism happens all over the world. The problem with things like the Black Lives Matter movement, please don't say all lives matter. Yes, all lives matter, but when black people are constantly treated like they're inferior to white people, it doesn't seem like they matter as much. So the point of Black Lives Matter is to draw attention to this inequality. Is this still going? I mean, I feel like this racial stuff is, is pretty old news. Like, I mean, we've, we've gotten rid of slaves, we don't have segregation, you can ride the bus, you can vote. Like, I mean, we've pretty much fixed all these issues. You're saying that as if they should be grateful for rights that you and I have always enjoyed. I mean, there's still very much a racial divide today. If, if I go somewhere, no one questions me because of the color of my skin, but if a black person walks into the store, the clerk's gonna be watching him so much more closely. Well, we seem to be getting a lot of comments about how racism is still definitely alive today. One of them reads, As a black man in America, I can tell you, racism is not an occasional thing. If I get pulled over, the cop will assume the car is stolen. If I apply for a job, they'll assume I have a police record. I once watched a white coworker get a raise. When I asked my boss why I didn't get one, he said it was because I always showed up late for work. Which of course makes no sense, since I carpool every day with that coworker who got the raise. Yeah, racism is still alive today, and that's the whole point. We can't act like, oh, we've done enough. We can ignore it now. I mean, that's the whole point of this kneeling protest, is to say discrimination is still alive. It's only our white privilege that allows us to ignore it. Look, I understand there's, like, trickle-down racism, and there's still a few things we need to fix, but this white privilege thing is BS. I never got my white person starter pack. White privilege isn't about some bonus you get for being white. It's, it's about the all the negative crap you don't have to deal with for being a minority. It's, it's, it's the fact that we can pretend like racism doesn't exist 
simply because it doesn't affect us. Right, so go to an African country, uh, and when you get back, if you get back, tell me what your white privilege got you there. That completely misses a point. Privilege comes in different flavors for different countries. Here in America, it's being a straight white Christian male. That gives you the most privilege. In Africa, that's not going to be the recipe. They're going to have their own combination for having the most privilege. Well, either way, they definitely want special treatment. I mean, think about when Tim Tebow knelt. He was mocked and ridiculed and fired for bringing faith into the workplace. Yet these guys are allowed to disrespect our country? No consequences? No, he wasn't fired for that. I don't think he was punished or even fined for doing that. Like, I mean, he, he knelt before and after the games, which is something he had been doing even before the NFL. He might not have been fined for the kneeling, but he was definitely told he couldn't wear a Bible verse on his eye black. I mean, if he's not allowed to make his statement, why are these players allowed to make their statement? Yeah, but another player was also fined for having find the cure in his eye black, and, and players have been fined for wearing like colored cleats to go along with awareness causes. Yeah, all of that. So what's the difference? These fines weren't to silence the players, it was a punishment because they were in violation of the uniform code, which is extremely strict and even includes the eye black. But right, but the NFL policy also states that you should stand for the anthem. So if you're punishing people because of their uniforms, but not punishing them for the anthem, it shows where the NFL's priorities are. So here's a commenter with a different perspective on Tebow. Tebow might not have been fired for kneeling, but he was constantly mocked and ridiculed by the media for his faith. So why does the media justify these players bringing their politics into the field? I would say the answer is because Trump hates the kneeling and the media will support anything Trump hates. Yeah, but this isn't politics. This is them talking about their lives. I mean, the only reason it seems remotely political is because the president made a statement about it. Without that statement, there's absolutely nothing political about this. Even if it didn't start politically, as soon as the president made a statement, it became political. I mean, of course the media is going to strongly support it now. They hate the president. You're right, the distractions have been terrible. This isn't about politics. It's not about religion. It's not about patriotism. This is about standing up, kneeling down for something that you believe in. But I mean, have we solved any injustice so far? Or have we just served to make people more angry with each other? I feel like it's a good cause, but they need to have a better venue. They need to do something other than interrupt people's entertainment. And this is what I was saying earlier, it's never the right time for a black person to protest. If they say, black lives matter, you say, no, all lives matter. If they try to kneel peacefully, you try to say, oh, that's disrespecting the flag. It's, this is just trying to silence another protest, which is something we've been doing for decades. Well, the bottom line is, the NFL is a job, and employers can demand that their employees are respectful. Whether you're on duty or off duty, if you're causing your employer to lose money, they have the right to tell you, either you stop or we're going to fire you. Oh, even off the job, like no freedom of speech? Fair point. Free speech on your own time. Protest on your own time. But remember, freedom of speech means the government can't silence you. It doesn't say you're not going to have consequences from your employer. Well, speaking of government interference, some people believe that it should be legally required to stand during flag ceremonies. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, personally, I prefer the government to have as little control as possible, but your team, absolutely, the team can make that rule. Especially if the team's losing money, they absolutely can make that rule. Well, see, we're back to my issue. We're more likely to talk about this and maybe even pass a law about standing for the song than we are to actually listen to what the protest was about. It's about respect. I mean, if you hate the flag in the country that much, don't kneel. Get up and leave. No, they shouldn't leave. It's, it's our patriotic duty. If we see our country going the wrong direction, we need to stand up and protest. We need to say something. Well, disrespecting the flag, our country, and our soldiers, that's definitely the wrong way to go. Let's talk about disrespecting the flag for a minute. During the halftime, they bring out the flag horizontally across the field. According to the flag code, that's a violation. You're also not supposed to have flag t-shirts or flag napkins. I mean, I see it as so much more disrespectful to wipe the grease off your face with an American flag napkin than it is to kneel peacefully during a song. No, it's about the motive behind it. See, people wear a flag t-shirt to show their patriotism, to show how much they love their country. People kneel for the flag to show how disappointed they are in their country. It's not as much about the technicalities as much as it is the spirit behind it. Just feels like you're putting a lot of effort into justifying ignoring injustice. Well, we have one last comment which reads, I'm tired of turning the other cheek. Black Wall Street was burned down less than a hundred years ago. Rosa Parks had a fight for her bus seat in 1955, and Jim Crow laws were still in effect until 50 years ago. This is not ancient history. The current disproportionate incarceration and police brutality towards blacks is just another link in a long chain of racism. And black lives continue to be ignored. It doesn't matter if they're kneeling on a field or sitting on a bus, it's, people will always find a reason to ignore them. And if they finally get tired of being ignored and riot, people will just use that as an excuse to justify their racism. This was never about the protest. This was about silencing someone. Yeah, but what I'm hearing is, 
we're doing the right thing. We're fixing things. Things are getting better. We're making improvements. So as long as we just keep doing what we're doing, we're on the path to success. But the only reason Rosa Parks made any progress was because she caused a scene. I mean, besides the point that it's stupid that we needed to be told that segregation was bad, the only reason that movement started was because she disrupted that bus ride. So you would welcome riots. Or maybe we start by not complaining about kneeling. Well, now we're at fourth and goal, so it's time for that final play. Let's hear your thoughts. The protest has been sabotaged and politicized, and distractions allow people to ignore the actual issues. I mean, even if you don't agree with someone's point, you shouldn't try to sabotage them and shut down their discussion. Look, perception is reality. If people see this as disrespect, it is disrespect. You need to adjust and move on, or they're going to move on without you. Well, like we say here, you don't have to agree, you just have to see the point. So Zach, what's Ron's point? Ron believes that there were many factors that, that tainted this protest. Uh, he would say that it started with bad intentions and then continued with disrespect. So, you know, he believes that it's probably got too much negative baggage to even be an effective protest at all at this point. And Ron? What's Zach's point? Zach believes in the spirit of the protest. He, he thinks that even on company time, they should be able to protest no consequences. He thinks that if you are against this protest, you're on the wrong side of history. Well, that's it for today's Moderate Divide. Remember, if you have anything you'd like to add, drop it in the comments below. Bye!